Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. Dolly Parton created the anthem 9 to 5 in 1980, in which she called attention to some of the inequities that women experienced in the workplace. As more women entered the workforce, it became painfully obvious that they were not treated on an equal basis with males. Working from 9 to 5, wondering how to make a living, just scraping by, it's all about taking and giving. They simply make use of your intellect and never acknowledge your contribution. If you allow it to, it has the potential to drive you insane. Lean In is an approach that is both inspiring and pragmatic in its pursuit of employment and domestic equality for all. The call for leaning in may appear to be an unsympathetic, hardline approach to gender equality that burdens women with additional responsibilities, but there is much more to Sandberg's call for women to lean in. Leaning in means being assertive, claiming back the right to achieve goals, and finding equality in terms of domestic responsibilities. You may be famished. You may be famished. Sandberg was the first woman to serve on the board of directors of Facebook and is the founder of the nonprofit organization LeanIn.org. Despite the fact that she is a billionaire and philanthropist, there is a reason why she has been dubbed one of the world's most important individuals. For her part, Sandberg calls for both men and women to be active participants in closing the gender gap. This briefer overview examines corporate leadership and development, with particular attention paid to women's underrepresentation in upper level management and leadership positions. Some of the barriers that prohibit women from achieving success, like as discrimination and harassment, are addressed in Lean In, but it also covers the barriers that women erect for themselves. So, whether you're a woman seeking professional advancement or a guy seeking to contribute to the creation of a more fair society, this is a wonderful place to begin. Keeping the home fires burning. Approximately how many female leaders do you come across in your daily life? Did you know that just 22 women have held the position of head of state in history? When this book was published in the United States, women controlled 18% of all congressional positions. If you look at your own life, how many times do you notice women quitting their jobs for a few years, resigning from their jobs, or opting out of the workforce entirely? And of the top 500 firms ranked by revenue, just 21 are led by women. According to Sandberg, many women work hard to achieve success in university but then leave the employment in order to devote more time to their families. Sandberg believes that this does not have to be the case. Workplaces must change in order to accommodate working parents' requirements. Since of the incapacity of employers to be flexible and tolerant of parental duties, many talented people are unable to enter the workforce or choose to leave because there is too much to juggle. Furthermore, because many male partners are hesitant to share the domestic tasks, women feel obligated to assume these responsibilities. It is not only the attitude of certain male partners that contributes to women staying at home with their children. The leadership ambition gap, which is founded on different discourses about women, is another issue to consider. For example, the belief that women must remain at home to care for their families. Having a family while also working is frequently perceived as being too difficult. As a result, when faced with the decision between a profession and a family, many women choose to leave their careers. The result is that many women do not pursue jobs or senior level positions because they believe that they are incompatible with having a family. Women have been indoctrinated into believing that career and family are incompatible and hence do not aspire to career and senior level roles. On top of all of that, females are raised with an abundance of gender preconceptions about what makes acceptable behavior. Unlike young boys, who are often praised for being assertive and willing to go to any length to achieve their goals, when young girls do the same, they are frequently regarded as bossy or unladylike. Also, when it comes to executive jobs, men and women have very different perspectives. Unlike males, who actively seek them out, women are more complacent when it comes to finding them. A lot of this has to do with early learning and development, according to Sandberg, who believes that we need to be more conscious of how gender stereotypes influence how we view the world and how we behave. For example, we're told that women must marry before the good ones are taken away from them. Women need to hurry up and get married, or else they'll be left on the shelf. And women attending select colleges are more likely to find a better quality husband. Instead of accepting these views, women must take a stand and challenge gender biases and stereotypes. While there is nothing wrong with wanting to start a family and sacrificing one's work to do so, the goal is to examine how we are raising women today. And it's not about imposing an idea, 
but rather about demonstrating that women have more options than they realize. Females must have self-confidence in order to actively pursue their goals and ambitions stop focusing on what we aren't. So, how do you feel about your brain and your skill set right now? So many of us are plagued by feelings of insecurity and self-doubt, and women are particularly vulnerable to these feelings. The majority of women in the workplace admit to feeling like a fraud and that they lack the necessary qualifications. Despite the fact that the faculty evaluated them higher than their male counterparts, women assessed themselves lower than their male counterparts in a survey of surgery students. When asked to rate their own levels of competence in another study involving political candidates, males ranked themselves as highly qualified 60% more frequently than women. Most men respond to adversities with confidence, however most women find it difficult to display the same levels of confidence in the same situations as men. Sandberg says that a large part of this is due to the way in which women have been stereotyped in the past. Female employees suffer from a lack of self-confidence in the job, resulting in a distortion of reality that prevents them from recognizing their own worth and abilities. To maintain their sense of self-worth and value, women must constantly remind themselves of their prior successes and achievements, as well as lean into sentiments that affirm their worth and value. The issue about accomplishments is that they aren't plentiful when you don't have the confidence to go out and get them yourself. And, while we're on the subject of confidence, women should keep their hands up and ask questions. Other people need to encourage women to speak up and to recognize when women are being silenced, ignored, or passed over for promotions or other opportunities. Miscongeniality is a person of warmth and kindness. According to a 2003 survey, there is a significant difference between how men and women are perceived in the workplace. Two different groups were given case studies that were identical in terms of the entrepreneur's profile. The only variation between the two case studies was that in one, the entrepreneur was referred to as Howard, while in the other, she was referred to as Heidi. The findings revealed that, despite the fact that both Howard and Heidi were respected by both groups, Howard obtained a significantly higher likability rating than Heidi. The behavior of two identical people was studied, yet one was found to be more likable merely because of how we perceive gendered behavior. It is easy to like men who take decisive action, have a natural drive, and a strong feeling of authority. Women, on the other hand, who exhibit these characteristics are not regarded in the same way. Many believe that this is due to the expectations placed on women, according to which they are expected to be inherently compassionate and nurturing in their roles. Women, according to popular thought, are not intended to be individualistic, rather, they are expected to embrace the community spirit and act with more of a group mindset when in public. In addition, being well-liked among co-workers and outsiders is important for several reasons. According to Sandberg, these gender discourses and stereotypes have a negative impact on women's financial well-being. The term gender discount problem refers to the fact that women frequently shoulder the burden of their male counterparts' work. In situations where there is additional marking to be done, reports to be written, muffins to be ordered, or retirement gifts to be arranged, women are more likely to take on this work because they are more communal and good at this type of work. However, the problem with this type of work is that there is no monetary compensation. So often, these additional jobs and projects come with additional obligations, but they do not come with any monetary compensation. Women frequently perform a great deal of unseen work in the hopes that their efforts will be noticed. Rather than asking for money, they prefer to sit back and hope that someone will notice their excellent job. Diara syndrome is the concept that if a woman works hard enough, someday someone will notice her and reward her with a symbolic tiara, which is what it's known in the United Kingdom. Unfortunately, this is rarely the case, if you don't ask for what you want, it's unlikely that you'll get what you ask for. It's also important to consider how the salary discussions are going to play out. Because of salary inequalities, women have the right to demand higher wages than their male colleagues. In 2010, women earned 77 cents for every dollar earned by males in the same profession. As aggressive and self-advocating as women are not supposed to be, when they do so, they are frequently met with hostility. As a result, when it comes to discussing pay raises, most women use softer tactics. For example, instead of being persistent and confident, they may choose to exhibit concern for others and accentuate their pleasantness as a coping mechanism. Sandberg believes that women must bargain on an equal footing with men. She cites the example of joining Facebook to illustrate her point. When Mark Zuckerberg made his initial offer, Sandberg wanted to accept it immediately. However, she was urged to make a counteroffer, 
and the resulting negotiation resulted in a significantly better deal for her. Making a difference is being the change. When you talk to the most successful people, the vast majority of them will mention a mentor who has assisted them in getting to where they are now. When it comes to navigating a profession and making the correct decisions at the right moment, having a mentor is essential. Women frequently struggle to locate mentors, and as a result, they become extremely persistent in their efforts to establish relationships and frequently overextend themselves in their efforts to engage a mentor. Men, on the other hand, are more likely than women to spontaneously enter into mentor-mentee relationships because they are easier to form. Sandberg's advice is to not push yourself too much. She claims that we've been trained to believe that if we obtain a mentor, we'll be successful. Her argument is that rephrasing the question as finding a mentor once you excel will alleviate the pressure and allow for the formation of more meaningful ties. The responsibility to mentor women falls on the shoulders of everyone, because there aren't nearly enough women in high-powered and senior roles. As a result, it is critical for men to take on mentorship responsibilities and to work as allies with other women. As for males, they must step up and take on more responsibilities in the areas of care and household chores, to name a few examples. In order for women to be successful, males must provide them with greater support by becoming more involved in their family's affairs. One idea is that men typically back away from these responsibilities as a result of negative feedback from female colleagues and friends. Housework and child care are typically performed by women since they act as maternal gatekeepers. It is only through having the authority to parent and perform domestic work that men can become more involved. Relaxing in terms of judgment and criticism can aid in this process, and women can contribute to it by doing so. It all boils down to communication when it comes to maintaining equality in the family. The best approach to manage expectations and establish healthy compromises is to have a strong relationship with your partner and talk about your job growth and future ambitions. It is one of the most important methods to bring about change to have open channels of communication in which women are heard as much as men and are not condemned for being too emotional. How to create a career map for your success. We can use Sandberg's advice to plan our professional futures. Despite the fact that we are accustomed to hearing about the ladder to success, this metaphor is no longer applicable. A job for life is unlikely for most of us, and we frequently change jobs in order to gain more diverse work experience and knowledge. In terms of how we go through our professional lives, the term career jungle gym is more apt. We can move upwards at times, and we can also pivot and move side to side at other times. Andre Sandberg recommends that we define short-term objectives and work on upskilling on a constant basis. The decision must be made as to whether it is a smart idea to take time off from work to participate in a course or a workshop, or whether taking a year off to learn a critical new talent is worth a financial sacrifice. It is preferable to look for employment that encourage growth in learning rather than positions with a renowned title. Try new things and don't be satisfied with a stable employment. Learning new abilities and taking on challenging situations is frequently more vital than settling into a predictable employment. Because real learning comes from overcoming barriers, many prospective employers may inquire about our past experiences and problems. Keep in mind that you must always advocate for yourself, and should not rely on others to do so. At the end of the day, pink is associated with females and blue with boys, according to our upbringing. As the saying goes, girls are comprised of sugar, spice, and everything pleasant, which makes it difficult for them to be assertive and pursue honors or promotions. In addition, women should look for these opportunities because, as Sandberg notes, we stand on the shoulders of the women who came before us, women who had to battle for the rights that we now take for granted. Everyone, especially women, has a responsibility to critically examine their role in the world and to avoid being paralyzed by fear. The dread of not being good enough plagues women, and many suffer from performance anxiety, believing that their best is never good enough. Having awful mothers and wives, as well as a poor performance, are fears that they have. Because of this heightened sense of terror, Sandberg recommends women to reinterpret their feelings and lean into them instead. Female pioneers must take risks and venture into territory where no other woman or man has gone before. Moreover, in order to accomplish this, women must establish boundaries and recognize that getting things done is preferable to striving for perfection. As we've learned from radical acceptance, perfection is a lie that must be discredited. Illusion of having it all sacrifice and compromise are essential in everything we do. As a result, we must start with priorities and goals, then discuss these goals, and finally figure out how to go forward in a way that is both sustainable and fruitful. It's not about having it all when you lean into the situation.
It's all about the possibility when you take a chance on yourself. Because they compromise too much or settle for less, a large number of women fall short of their full potential. Females are encouraged to assert themselves and demand what they are entitled to. If they don't want to be CEO, this does not necessarily imply that they will become one. The importance of having more women in leadership positions cannot be overstated, since having more female voices in positions of power would make the world a more egalitarian place. In the words of Sandberg, a truly equitable world would be one in which women led half of our countries and corporations and men led half of our homes. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.